What's up, everybody? I'm Eric Hansen, coming to you today live from the Epic Trails studio, aka my own personal gear garage in my house. I am about to set off for a three-day backpacking trip through the desert of Utah, so I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to run through all of the things that I am going to be taking on my desert backpacking adventure. Before we actually get into the video and break down everything, I'd like to ask a quick favor to like and subscribe to our channel here. It definitely helps us get the word out and for you to be notified when we've got good stuff coming your way. I'd also like to give a shout out to Mystery Ranch here. They are making a lot of things possible with some of our video shoots here with Backpacking TV and Epic Trails. They make amazing backpacks that I totally recommend. I've been using them for a long time and familiar with them from my long ago guiding days. So if you wanna check them out, check them out at mysteryranch.com. They are awesome and bomber packs. Okay, let's talk about all the things for you to take on your backpacking trip in the desert. Now, I do have a separate video on what makes backpacking in the desert completely unique to say, backpacking in the mountains or Pacific Northwest or other types of places. There are things about the desert environment that are unique. And so I would like to and kindly invite you to go check those out and enjoy that video as well. But uh, yeah, so we'll kind of start with the basics. I have uh, my tent and my sleeping mattress. And then behind me, I have my system of sleeping bags. So starting with kind of your baseline, which is your shelter and your sleep system. Uh, it's November here and it's going to be chilly and wintry. Actually, you might hear some tinkling of hail hitting my garage door as we go through this video. There is a storm actively upon us right now and it may affect how we backpack. So in all likelihood it will. So that's part of what I'm gonna be talking to you about is how to be prepared for some of the weather that can happen in the desert and things like that. But, so I'm gonna be taking my Marmot Tungsten Ultralight two-person tent. I am really lucky to have some ultralight gear that I have uh, received from different companies just throughout the years of being a backpacker and here as a, a host of different programs. They send me lots of stuff and it's pretty nice. So this is a really nice two-person tent. It's pretty light. It, I believe, weighs in at uh, 2.9 pounds, which is pretty light. So um, if you're curious about some of the tents and breakdowns and sleep like that, we have some other videos that are available for you to go dive down the rabbit hole there. My favorite sleeping mattress that I've ever used is the Sea to Summit Comfort Plus. Uh, and actually this is a really good one for cold temperatures as well. This one has uh, some insulating capabilities. It actually has some down in the air. It's like a four inch air mattress. So it's super plush and comfortable you will sleep like a baby on that thing. And so I love this thing. And then I will show you, actually, this is going to be my bag that I'm gonna take. It is the Ascent 2 from Sea to Summit. It's a 15 degree bag. It's supposed to be getting down to like 22 degrees while we're out there. So that's gonna be pretty nippy, but the 15 degree bag will be kind of right on that threshold of comfortable for me. It'll probably be throughout the night a little bit chilly, uh, but, it can, it's more than capable, so that's the bag I'm gonna take. Okay, so sleeping gear, tent, sleeping mattress, sleeping bag, those are the things that are all gonna be going on the bottom of my backpack here. And uh, I, I'm gonna be talking about a handful of different videos. We have another video on how to pack everything. So if you wanna know how all of this stuff actually ends up in a backpack and where you should be putting things, where should you should be putting the heavy things, your food, your water, your maps, your headlamps, all those details, gets breaking, broken down. I break down all of those things in another video. So we'll have a link to that. So please check that out as well. Okay, so that's sleeping gear. Let's talk about water. Desert, uh, desert backpacking trips, water is gonna be obviously critical. Usually water can be hit or miss. I'm gonna be backpacking, I think, where there should be some consistent, reliable water sources. But something about backpacking in the desert is that water is often gonna be super, super silty and sandy. So I am taking the MSR Guardian, which is a really bomber, almost overkill water filter for most people. It is expensive, it is large, but the thing that I love about it is that it has two things. It has a pre-filter, 
that is going to help with a lot of that silt and sediment uh, sticking, staying out of my filter. And then it actually has two uh, tubes here. One is an intake and one is an output, I guess. I'm not sure how you should say that, but it is literally spitting out dirty, dirty water. You can see how much dirt has uh, passed through these tubes uh, in their life. And what that does is that it doesn't stay in my filter. So this same filter I've been using for like six years and it's still cruising. So that is another thing about the desert backpacking that is really critical. You can take other water filters. We do have a whole water filtration video as well. So check that out. Uh, but know that silt is a big factor in the desert for water filtration. I'm also gonna have some water storage and water transport. So I've got a drum bag. This is a two liter drum bag from MSR and just your standard Nalgene bottle. One of the things that I really like about this is these will actually screw together and connect and make a really super handy uh, way to just pump your water. The water goes straight into it and you're not dealing with like dangly tubes that are trying to run away from you and get in the dirt and in the mud. So that's super handy. Okay, uh, another thing that I'm gonna be taking with me here is my stove and cooking setup. Now this is a little bit different uh, for me this trip because I often go backpacking with a jet boil, uh, which is awesome if you are just looking for a quick way to get hot water going for especially like backpacker meals or something like that where you've got a dehydrated meal. Uh, I love it, it's a super great way to do it. And if you are creative, there you can cook more elaborate meals too. But I'm gonna be taking the MSR Whisper Light with me because I can actually take a pot that I can use and cook some more elaborate meals. So this is my Sea to Summit Alpha 1.9 liter pot, which I have thoroughly enjoyed from Sea to Summit. Super light, titanium, easy to clean, easy to manage. It's got some interior uh, plateware as well. So obviously that is super handy, making it easy. Sometimes I can store other food items like pro bars or different foods that I'm gonna be taking with me. I can literally just be like, oh cool, I've got some extra storage room, free up my backpack a little bit. Okay, sticking with kind of kitcheny types of things, I am going to be taking, I always backpack with a, a camp mug. If you've watched some of my other videos, it's something that I frequently talk about as one of my comfort items. I really like having a big, nice, kind of overkill camp mug. Uh, with insulating capabilities so that my coffee will stay warm for a nice enjoyable cup of coffee rather than those really thin uh, tinny kind of cups that you're either burning your fingers on or the coffee becomes ice cold and you never hit that sweet spot with the medium nicely temperatured coffee. So I like this a lot. Uh, so I've got my coffee mug and then I'm actually going overkill on a few things here but I'm taking my AeroPress with me because I do truly love coffee. If you've watched me with some of these coffee videos, I have expressed my love for them. But uh, also, if you want to go smaller, a really great option is Alpine Start Coffees. It's kind of like Starbucks Vias. They're just really simple, just little packs of powdered coffee and uh, add it to a cup of hot water and you've got yourself a nice tasty cup. So those I fully endorse and love. I just feel like making some kind of hot barista style uh, coffee in the canyon, so that's my preference. And always make sure that you bring a fork or a spork in this case, uh, some cutlery, it's an easy thing to forget, but uh, I'd prefer not eating with my fingers or a stick or something like that. A lighter is very easy to forget. Do not forget that, especially with this kind of stove because they don't have the ignition system that a jet boil would have. A knife for, not only for random things like maybe cutting some rope or whatnot, but I'm also gonna be doing some actual cooking, so bringing a knife with me, so I've got an ability to cut my Adele's sausage, which I love, as you probably know if you've been around for any of my previous cooking or food videos before. And then I've just got a handful of snacks. This isn't necessarily literally everything that I'm taking for nutrition. In fact, it's probably just about half of it, uh, but I do have some other videos as well on all the nutrition breakdowns, if you're interested in those link below, like we keep saying here. But yeah, so I really like pro bars. I've got these epic bars that are kind of like meat sticks or beef jerky. These uh, Cliff Block bars are really super tasty gels. Wild Zora, they make some really nice trail food as well that I've really liked. 
and good to go. They make really wonderful backpacking meals and you can hear all that hail going on. <laughs> That's actually really loud right now. So good to go, which is a, they make backpacking meals, super easy. I'm actually going to be doing some pretty elaborate meals. I'm gonna be doing some actual cooking uh, on this trip, but because for most of the video's sake, it's kind of educational and tutorial, I highly endorse good to go as a backpacking meal. They're not a sponsor. I just really have loved their meals. Uh, they make a really good system here. So if you want a simple solution for your food, that's an awesome thing. Uh, that's my food, uh, at least most of it. There'll be some other snacks and stuff that I'll just get from the grocery store, nuts and trail mixes and dried fruits and things like that that I'll be taking with me as well. Okay, so another thing that's really critical to bring with you that can be easy to forget is your illumination. It is definitely a safety piece. So remember your headlamp. I'm gonna bring in my LED lenser. It's a 600 lumen headlamp. Really nice rechargeable batteries, lasts a long time, super powerful beam, which I really like to be uh, using those powerful beams. But the main thing for me is I like to not just go through and churn through AAA batteries. So I really like having those rechargeables there. Um, another safety piece that might be overlooked and not thought of is skin protection, sun protection, things like chapped lips and uh, wind burn. We've got a storm coming in, so probably gonna be having a lot of wind burn and things like that. So I'm gonna be taking some Dermatone with me for not only like sunscreen, but uh, like lip balm or maybe something for my nose so that that windburn kind of goes away. Uh, my backpacking uh, backcountry med kit here. So this, I actually have a, sometimes what I'll do because this can be pretty bulky to take. So I'm going on a two person backpacking trip. What I like to do is actually remove a few of the things out of it. Just usually you get doubled up or tripled up with your gauzes and your pads and things like that. So I'll remove some of it so it's a little smaller, but I'll definitely be taking a med kit with me uh, for especially like blister care and things like that. It's super handy to have that. Um, and then I, this is not gonna be my full, full clothing, but to talk about a couple of things, I've got my uh, ex officio quick dry underwear, antimicrobial, so it's super nice for backpacking. I don't like wearing cotton underwear or things like that. So, so that's a really nice pair of underwear to take for a backpacking trip. Wool socks, I'm gonna be taking a couple of pairs. I'm gonna be hiking in, in and out of a creek. So making sure that I have dry socks that I can change into, especially at night. Maybe I'll probably have three pairs of socks. I'll probably have two pairs to swip swap back and forth it, during the hike in case, uh, you know, get wet and wanna hang one on the back of my pack to dry have one to wear, and then one that is only for sleeping so that I'm comfortable around camp. Uh, I'm gonna be bringing my beanie and gloves and my down jacket. Those to me, I consider those to be like a lot of safety pieces as well. Obviously you just wanna be comfortable out there, but we do have wild weather and uh, down jackets and things like that, rain gear will be critical to take with me as well. Uh, it's always just a good backup to have. Sometimes, even if it's not raining specifically, but if, it, if you've got a 30 mile an hour wind, you wanna use your rain jacket and probably your rain pants as well as just a safety piece. It cuts that wind and it makes you be able to retain your warmth. So those are really handy things to have with you that I consider safety pieces. Uh, and then obviously I've got my backpack. Everything here is going into my backpack. This is my Mystery Ranch Terra Frame. It's a 65 liter bag. Now, a lot of people for a three day backpacking trip, you could get away and I would actually recommend something smaller, something like a 55 liter bag. But because I'm taking extra stuff, I'm actually gonna be backpacking with my girlfriend. She is going on her very first backpacking trip ever. I'm gonna be trying to take a little bit extra of the load between the two of us. And then I as well take a lot of camera equipment too because I am a photographer and it plays a role in the show with shooting things. So I'll be taking some extra gear here that you obviously do not need to be taking in a general backpacking trip. So that's what I'm gonna be taking, a 65 liter bag. If you're interested in seeing how to pack all of these things, like I mentioned earlier, stay tuned for our other video. We've done it before uh, and 
it's really helpful because you might not know where to put your heaviest items, your lightest items, and that can go a long way to making sure that you enjoy your experience backpacking. Let's talk about footwear real quick. So I'm going to be hiking in these Aku or AKU uh, really lightweight shoes here. And if you, rec these are basically like a trail runner or a really light cross trainer. And for me, that's what I like backpacking in when it comes to desert terrain. Mostly because I'm going to be going into a place with uh, creek water crossings, constant water crossings, and I wanna be backpacking where I don't have to take my shoes off every time I would go through the water because it's going to be multiple times a day, probably a dozen to 20 times a day. So just hiking in something that you can just plow through the water in and then I will also be taking some sort of like camp shoe, like a Chaco or just a light sandal that I can change in that'll be dry for around camp. But that's why I take these lightweight shoes. I have a whole bunch of shoe footwear options behind me. I don't like taking the big heavy leather boots or the Gore-Tex boots that a lot of people wear for other places, but uh, those can be really bulky, too bulky for the desert. And especially if you're going through creeks or things like that, you're gonna have to take them off and that's just not really gonna be feasible. So that's why I go with these lightweight, super thin, breathable material, kind of cross trainer, trail runner type shoes. I really like taking these dry bags because you can stuff your clothes in it, your down jackets, your things that you know you want for camp to stay dry throughout the day. And even if it's not going to be wet or rainy or worried about water, you can just stuff all your clothes in, compress it down, tighten it up, throw it in your bag and it will save some space too. So it's kind of like a safety piece because it keeps your stuff dry, but it's also convenient even if water has nothing to do with it. So I like these dry bags. So this is a 13 liter bag from Sea to Summit uh, and it's super light. So even if I'm not actively using it, it's a low consequence thing. It doesn't weigh hardly anything and therefore it's easy to just throw in your bag to make sure you're safe. You might have noticed this cordage, this rope uh, here in the front. This is not a must have, but actually for where I'm going, I'm gonna be going in Canyon country. And uh, there is a strong possibility that I'm gonna to need to be doing some scrambling, probably some pack lowering as we work our way down cliffs and into the canyons that we're gonna be hiking in. So that's why I'm bringing this. It's not a, a mandatory type thing, but having something like this, this is 30 feet of rope or cordage. And uh, you can certainly get away with something a lot lighter than this, but I am counting on being able to lower about 50 pounds of gear, maybe even more than that on that. That's why I'm going with the thicker stuff. But uh, it can be really helpful to just have twine, cordage, paracord, that type of thing with you. Maybe you need it to tie down your tents or something like that. But so that is something that I will be backpacking with and uh, you might see it in action on our trip here later. Okay, my friends, there she is, a beautifully, impeccably packed backpack. I didn't, shoot, I didn't show you uh, actually all the water that went in there, but there's gonna be about three liters of water in my pack, so it'll be a little heavier. But other than that, it's all done. Now, we just gotta hit the trail, and go off and have an adventure in the desert.